Hi everybody, it's Gamer Number 98 here, and I all hope you had a good Christmas. I know Trick on Snivy definitely did. They were under the mistletoe. Um, don't let them find out I told you, uh, okay? Um, and one of them would get so embarrassed. Too late. Damn it. Anyway, last time we did stuff here on Winfrey Island, and we're about to head out. But before that, remember this really unhappy guy who wanted us to take a picture of a perfectly round pale thing well we did that oh that's right that, that certainly is the pictograph I'm looking for the correct answer is exactly what you've so shown me the full moon unrequited love may have twisted me up inside but I can still find peace when I gaze at the timeless moon and if all her f and of all her faces, I particularly love gazing at the full moon. Well, why the full moon in particular? Surely, surely it's more than just a personal opinion, eh? I know I caused you a lot of trouble, but thanks. I really mean it. I want you to have this for all your efforts. Just a little reward for easing the pain of this troubled heart. So there's another treasure chart. Yeah, 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 I get it. This supposedly has a spot on it that marks where some sunken treasure lies. I have, n I don't have a boat, so I can't leave this island to go look for it anyway. Tonight I'll be asking the night sky to help you find the treasure. Best of luck. Well, we don't need you anymore. So let's take a look at this. 31. Alright, that's the forest haven actually. Alright, so now, without any more delays, we are heading out to Northern Triangle Isle to place Din's Pearl in place. Oh, ring of light right over there. I see it. I mean, it has been a while since we finished the Forbidden Wood, so it would be nice to start off with a dungeon at, at long last. Uh, yeah, Christmas was fun, but now we're in the last week of 2011. Yes, already. So there's not really much to look forward to until the new year. I mean, we are getting this really weird Mario game on the Wii called Boom Street, also known as Fortune Street. Uh, I'm really not interested in it. It looks like Mario Party, but it's not. It's more like a Monopoly game. And it looks confusing. I mean, this is the first of its kind to come outside of Japan because this series started off in the NES days. I'd say if it was Japan only, that would be the Famicom, but they're the same thing, alright? Stay away from the tornado. Oh, and the Octorok. Oh, well, their aim is pretty bad anyway. Alright, so here we are. And this one has a nose. Oh look! It's reacting! It is gonna blow! Wait, is it? Huh. Surprise! Haha! <laughs> it's Din!
It's my telephone! Uh. Hey, Odoin fans. He loves you. Look at that tower. Splat. I hope that didn't mess up with any of my stuff. Let's see. No. No, it didn't. Alright. So. The pearls of the goddesses made this huge tower appear in the middle of the Triforce symbol that I was mentioning several times before. It's God's thumb! This tower, which the pearls of the gods have caused to appear, is a place that the gods of the ancient world prepared so that they might test the courage of men. Only one who is able to overcome the trials that await here will be acknowledged by the gods to be a true hero. Only then will that hero be permitted to wield the power to destroy the great evil. Link, that which you must obtain now lies before you. You must believe in your own courage, which has led you to triumph over the many hardships you have faced, and you must triumph once again. You must rise above the trial of the gods. So, and so yeah, this square, which was empty before, is now the Tower of the Gods. This is actually the next dungeon. And now that the tower has appeared, we can actually get the, um, the fishman to appear. Yeah, I get the idea, just spell out my goddamn diggly dang thingy. Tower of the Gods. I've done a fish fortune on you, Fry. Sure you have. And from what I can tell, it looks like you're afraid to come to this place many times. And the keys that control that fate are none other than the lucky items known as the Triumph Fox, yeah? There's some sort of magical utens ut utensils. You want to learn more about the Triumph Fox? Talk to that guy, Tingle. That's what the fish fortune told me. Now I know I may only be a fish, but my fortune teller is uncannily accurate. You'd better believe it, Small Fry. Thanks, you just spoiled the game in 50 more parts. Actually, I don't know how long this game will last. Okay, getting over there is going to be really convenient right now. And. Am I at an angle? I'm changing the wind direction so I can get in there better. Northwest? I chose that direction for a reason. Anyway, there's a... Yeah, here we go. It's a perfect match. See, there's the beam of light. Okay. So once we get this treasure, we can finally start on a new dungeon. And it's a 200 rupees. A 200 rupees! That was great. Alright, let's go in there. Yep, we go in with our boat. The Tower of the Gods has several unique features out of all the dungeons in the game. Firstly, it is the only dungeon where you can take your boat inside with you. Plus, it's also the only dungeon, aside from the Forsaken Fortress, that does not have mystical pots to warp you around. Since mainly you're just ascending through the dungeon, going higher and higher, Plus, we will learn a new Wind Waker song in this dungeon. Alright.
Alright, so... Now there's no wind in here, so the only thing you can do is cruise your boat by holding R. Now the main gimmick of the first room here is the water level constantly goes up and down on the first floor. Yeah, the whole first floor has this water physic. Whoa, glitch! Alright, a new type of choo-choo, the yellow choo-choo, is electrified all the time. Now... Whoops. They are always electrified. And funnily enough, they have... They have red chew jelly for their spoils. Alright, whenever you see a cracked wall like this, that means it's weak and can be bombed. And this early, we're gonna get the dungeon map. Well, yeah, because this place does is quite big. Especially as we go high up, because look at all that we gotta go through. This dungeon does have a fair amount of backtracking, but only on the second floor, really. Everything else is not that bad. Oh god, it's gonna blow me over. Uh Oh, good. Uh, what happened to that? Huh? What happened down there? Did they? How the hell did they get stunned? What's in here? Oh, measly magic. All right, let's kill. Oh, damn it! You can't do a damn thing to them when they're on the water. Oh no! Oh, can I do this? Damn it, okay. Oh! Oh, it's the bombs! The bomb explosion stunned them. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. Quick. Oh, damn it. I'm not being quick enough. I'm supposed to take this. Pull it. Okay, I pulled it somewhat. I'm supposed to pull it towards this wall with the cracked wall. And then throw a bomb at it with the right timing. That's the way. But then to get over there, you're gonna need to... Ah! Terrorist attack from above! No, screw you. I need to get over there. Alright, okay, finally. May uh, that should be enough to get over there. Damn it, no, Link. Get up there. Ignore the choo-choo because it's invincible when it's on the water. What a waste. That was all for a joy pendant. So overall, this room is useless. It's only for the dungeon map and a joy pendant! Okay, let's keep going. Ugh. Alright, so next up we're going to head over there. To the left. This music's always caught my attention. It's just so haunting. Uh, oh, right. Uh. Oh, and check this out. The King of Red Lions reacts every time you fire a bomb. Alright. So now we're gonna need to be very careful. Because here's where we start to need to understand the way the water works. We need, a t we need a stick. And while the water level is down, we need to quickly grab a light, a torch, a fire, and we need to very quickly light these up while the water level is still down. And there we go. Now, I have so much I want to talk about, mainly stuff I could have talked about like a whole week ago. I mean, most of it's to do with Zelda, though. And that was all for Joy Pendant, yeah. Anyway... I will say this... First... Even though I still say Skyward Sword isn't as good as Twilight Princess, or even Wind Waker for that matter, I will say this... Zelda's 25th anniversary has definitely been better than Mario's. 
or Mario's 25th anniversary was a Super Nintendo game poured over to a Wii disc rather than being just released on the virtual console and plus they overpriced it and we will want to come back to this room later we just can't do anything about it right now because with Zelda's 25th anniversary we got a lot more Was I meant to do something in here? Oh yeah, that's right. So we have a locked door, what could it mean? Yeah, we're supposed to go that way. Aren't we? Let's block her. Oh yeah, that way. Derp. So going that way, we kind of went this way a bit too early. Excuse me, I kind of derped. So yeah, 25th anniversary of Zelda, definitely better. All Mario had was a special edition Wii and DSiXL and a crappy port of Super Mario All-Stars. Well no, it was an exact port. Just put on a virtual console, you lazy bums! Then again, the Wii's virtual console is dead today. They haven't updated it since the eShop came out. I really would like to know why that is. I mean, I keep thinking about asking Nintendo themselves about the question about this. Ask them why the Wii's virtual console has no support for it anymore. I do predict though that the Wii U will support the exact same virtual console, maybe other stuff like the GameCube. So maybe they're just leaving it until the Wii U comes out. So Zelda, well, you know, I mean, Zelda's 25th anniversary just had a lot more promotional stuff. Whoa, a mixture of red and green. No! Alright, so with this puzzle we once again go wait for the water to be down. So let's see, what did we get? Well, we got Ocarina of Time 3D, we got Four Swords re-released on DSiWare for free, we got Skyward Sword, of course, we got the orchestra, we got the Symphony Orchestra around the world, we had the um, Special Limited Edition 3DS for Ocarina of Time 3D, we got Minish Cap on the Ambassador Program for the 3DS, and uh, and that's what I can remember off the top of my head. So yeah, about Skyward Sword, I'm not saying it was a terrible game, it was a truly amazing game. I, I just prefer Twilight Princess, Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time above it. Because I'll be perfectly honest, Skyward Sword doesn't have much to it. The worlds feel a little short and empty, and there's a bit too much backtracking to previous worlds, there's just not enough exploration. Only really in the sky is there exploration. Anyway, remember that statue we got hold in there? We need to put it down in this pedestal. And now cause this thing to come down. And that's where we'll be going next. Link, you had better make it across. Thank you. I mean, my main grip with Skyward Sword was... Well, enough? Not much, really. I mean, I don't want to seem like I'm ungrateful for the hard work that Nintendo put into this game. It's just I don't see how this game is their biggest project to date. Five years in development? Was that... Was half of that spent on making the controls perfect? Because the nunchuck controls are too responsive. Take a stick. Oh, on, on. No, okay. At least I can strain these out. And be careful because you can destroy these... These... These crates with a rolling attack. Just wait for it to... Take a stick, burn it, jump across. Be very careful. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Skyward Sword was good, okay? It was good! It was really good! I mean, it's just not the best Zelda game! <laughs>